Hey there, it's Pat from Garage How To, and this is the How To Build a Garage series. Follow along as I build my own garage and share every step along the way. This video is focused on site plans. So, what exactly is a site plan? A site plan, or a plot plan as some would call it, is a drawing of proposed improvements to your property. So if you're building a garage like I am, your site plan would show what already exists on the property, like my house, my septic tank and drain field, my water well, etc. And also would show what you're proposing to build on your land, so the garage here. One of the most important features of a site plan is to show the relationship between what you're building and what already exists. All site plans are not created equal. Your building authority may require different things than mine does, but here are some examples of what generally should be included on a site plan. Number one, your name and your address, of course. Number two, the legal description of your property. This is different than your address because it includes things like your township, your range, your section, your tax law, that kind of a thing. Number three, the drawing must be to scale. For example, one quarter inch on the site plan equals one foot in real life. Number four, the direction of north to show how your property is oriented. Number five, your property lines must be on the site plan. Number six, the location of your driveway and adjacent streets. Number seven, your existing structures and your proposed structures. Number eight, if you have a well or even your neighbor has a well, the location of those wells and the distance from your proposed structures must be shown on the site plan. Number nine, if you have a septic tank, like I do, and a drain field, you need to show their location. In our county, we also have to show the location of a drain field replacement area, just in case ours ever fails. Number 10, the ground slope and the direction of the slope must be shown. Number 11, proposed setbacks from property lines. A setback is simply the distance from your property line to what you've proposed to build on the property. Number 12, if you have any waterways on your property like streams, ponds, or springs, you must show their location relative to the proposed structure or structures. And number 13, relative elevations at the building site as well as at the lot corners of the building site. So depending on where your property is located, your building authority may require more or even less information than what I just listed. Additional information may include landscape features, sidewalks and other walkways, utility services, including electrical service lines, water service lines, etc. So, what is the purpose of a site plan? Well, beyond just showing how your proposed structure or structures relate to what already exists on your property, site plans give your building officials the ability to check local building and zoning codes to ensure that what you're adding to your property falls within existing codes. Another important feature of a site plan and a building plan in general is to ensure that local services like schools, roads, sewer, and water and emergency services are adequate for what you're building. Compliance with zoning also ensures you will be less likely to encounter lawsuits for improper land use and that your project will be covered for potential future losses, like for insurance coverage. If you add something without a permit, or in a manner that does not comply with zoning and building codes, you may not be covered by your insurance policy if you ever do have a loss. So, how do you create a site plan? Well, most building authorities will not require a fancy site plan created with an expensive piece of software. Generally, a piece of graph paper, a pencil, and a ruler will almost always do the trick. The purpose of your site plan is to show an aerial view of your property with existing structures and property features drawn to scale, and then any proposed structures like my garage, drawn to show how it or they will relate to what already exists. Here are some general guidelines for creating a site plan. Number one, draw your site plan on graph paper. This makes it easier to create since you have the little lines to follow when drawing lines and shapes of your actual structure. Number two, Size-wise, site plans can generally be drawn on 8.5 by 11 or 8.5 by 14 paper. Check with your local building authority to be sure what they require. Number three, your drawing must be to scale. 
Your scale might be one quarter inch on the drawing equals one foot in real life, or one inch on the drawing equals 20 feet in real life. Number four, every dimension shown on your site plan must be labeled. If you need help with this, check with your local building authorities to see if they will provide you with a printout of your property. And this will show property lines, dimensions, neighboring properties, etc. Number five, some site plans show existing structures drawn with solid lines and proposed structures or items drawn with dashed lines. Other examples may use bolded lines to represent what is to be added. You just need to be able to distinguish the difference between what exists and what is proposed. Number six, existing and proposed driveways, walkways, patios, etc. must all be shown. Number seven, if you have very large trees on your property, some building authorities want to see them drawn on the site plan. Generally speaking, if your tree is more than two feet in diameter, just draw it on the site plan, showing its diameter and its species. To see a sample site plan, go to garagehowto.com slash buildagarage and look for site plan on the page. You can also search the page for site plan using Control F on your Windows computer or Command F on your Mac. Just remember the F means find. So here's one more benefit of a site plan. Once your plans are approved, your building plans are approved, a site plan will serve as a layout map for your proposed addition of a garage, a new room, a new driveway, or whatever else you're creating. When you are ready for actual site preparation, referencing your site plan will take a lot of guesswork out of your project. Site preparation is the next video in this series, so check it out when you're ready for that step. One more thing, remember to subscribe to this channel and visit garagehowto.com slash buildagarage if you want to follow along as I build my personal garage and share everything I learn along the way. We'll talk again soon. This is Pat from garagehowto.com. Number five, some site plans show existing structures, John. Some site plans show existing, stop. I didn't say number five. Number five, some site plans show existing structures drawn with solid lines, and per pro dang got to open your mouth i know other examples may use bolded lines to re shaw's bot that's a tough that's a tough paragraph wow